Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use SPSS to run a slightly more sophisticated conjoint analysis. For this I first off prepared some kind of design for which later on we collected some data. Well this design is focused around different cars. Say we have here three attributes which each of our car could have. First attribute being color, second audio equipment, third the price of the car. And then for each of the three attributes we have three levels. So for color the car could be blue, black or red. Regarding the audio equipment the car could have no audio equipment, standard equipment or high class equipment. And the price could be either 15, 18 or 20,000. This is just some random example we're going to use here to illustrate the general idea behind this well, um, approach I'm going to talk about. In the background, you can also see the data which we generated for this example. Here I have my nine cards, which you saw earlier. And for each of the nine cards, we let the participants evaluate on a scale of one to five how interesting this well, combination of attributes is for them, how interesting this car is for them. We have, as I said, nine times the respective answers from the participants. Then the Z card, that's just the normalized versions of the first nine cards. The interesting part starts after this. So that's usually, the first part is usually what you get if you run this experiment on your own. You give the cards from your orthogonal design to your participants and you let them rate this. But then we have to actually transform the data. Before I go there, one additional word, what I'm going to talk about here, you heard this, is based on these, each card has a rating score. If you worked with an example, where you use the choice experiment. One of the participants gets two of the cards presented and has to select which he prefers more. That's a totally different approach that requires a slightly more sophisticated or slightly different, let's say different approach than what we are going to do here. So that's what I'm going to talk here. Does not 100% apply to those classical choice experiments it works best for the example I'm going to illustrate this with here. So for rating each of the designs. With this word of advice beforehand, as I said, I have three attributes with three levels each. So I'm going to take up the first attribute, which was color. Color actually had three possible levels, blue, red and black. Let's say at this point I'm going to pick black as the reference category, as the default category. Then for each card I'm going to generate a new red variable and a new blue variable. Well, what do I put into these variables? That's best seen in the data view. I'm just going back here. In the red variable I'm putting a one if the respective car is about a uh, card is about a red car. For example, here card five, card seven, and card eight are about red cars. So that's why they have ones. All the other cards are assigned a zero. They do not have a red car. They have a blue car, they have a black car, but they do not have a red car. So this is just a set of very many dummy variables. Well, I'm doing this for red, I'm doing this for blue as well. Here we can see, I'm scrolling back a bit to the back, that the first card, the third card and the sixth card are about blue cars. The other ones are not about blue cars, so only card one, card three, card six are assigned a one, all the other cards are assigned zeros. Then the same thing we did for the colors, we're going to do for the audio equipment. Here, again, we have three different levels, no audio equipment, standard 
and high class audio equipment. In this case, the best idea, at least in my opinion, would be to set no audio equipment as default. So, for standard, we're going to introduce nine variables, one for each card. Again, putting a one there if the respective card has a standard equipment and a zero if it does not have a standard equipment. Similarly, for high, we're including nine high dummy variables with a one if the card has a, or displays a high class audio equipment, a zero if it does not display a high class audio equipment. That's for all the two attributes which are discrete, which are nominal. Well, color is nominal, audio equipment is nominal. So for this, we're going to introduce one dummy variable per level, except for the default level. The last one, the price is different. The price can be seen as metric. For this, we're just going to introduce one dummy for each card. Well, not, not so call this dummy, one variable for each card. And in this card, we're going to note the respective prices, the respective values. So in other words, whenever you have a metric variable, just note the respective value for this corresponding variable as listed on the card. So the first card lists a price of 15,000, the second card lists a price of 20,000, third also of 20,000, the fourth card of 18,000, and so forth. Once we prepared all of these new variables, so two times nine new variables for the colors, two times nine variables for the two audio equipments, and nine for the prices, we can actually start preparing our data. For this, we're going to data, and then we go to restructure. Because what we're going to need is so-called long format data. What we have here is wide format data. Wide format means we have different variables for each card once. But well, if I run, for example, something or want to run something like a regression analysis, I do not want to have like nine different evaluations, so nine different dependent variables and nine different explanatory variables. I don't want to have just like one dependent and then one or two independents. To get this, I need long format. So I want to basically put in the top all the answers for card one, then all the answers for card two, all the answers for card three, four, and so forth. So summarize all these nine cards into one variable. That means I'm going to switch from wide to long format. That's actually what we already have here as an example. First one displays going from wide to long format. So I click on next. Then he asked me, well, how many variables do we have? Well, we have more than one. We're not going to do this only for card. We're going to do this for the cards. Since we already have this for the normalized cards, we're going to do this for black and for, uh, sorry, for blue and for red. So for the two colors. For the standard audio equipment, for the high class audio equipment, and for the prices. So we have in total, seven different variables we're going to construct. And we can click on next. Then we assign actually all the variables to the respective new target variables. So the first one is actually the dependent, that's the evaluation. Then we can switch to the next variable. Now he does not, ex did not accept evaluation. Click on enter. Yeah, worked. Then the second one, we take the normalized scores. Just going to put this here as well. Call this evaluation 
norm, press enter. No, I didn't. For some reason has a problem with this. Variation norm. Now click enter and he accepted this. Okay, then we're going to select the third one. Third one now will be red. So we're just going to call this red. Then we select the fourth one. Fourth one we're going to call blue. Putting all the blue variables here. It's already different. We have standard equipment for audio. So put all the standard variables here. Then we do the high class audio. So we call this high. Put all the high class here. Finally, the last variable we're going to call price. Putting all the nine price variables here. Oops, it was a bit fast. So here I can see now I have for each set of nine variables, one new variable. Then I can click on next. He asked me about index variables. In this case, I do not need any particular index cases made. So I'm just going to stay with one. I could also go with none and just keep the as is. Also, I keep the sequential numbers. So you're going to number them one, two, three, four, and so forth. And also the final one, the first one, I could change what to, to do with the variables I did not select. So, well, in this case, I selected everything. So, but still, I would always go with drop whatever I did not use here because else, well, the data format might be slightly different. And I would always abstain from using different format or differently sized variables in the same data set. Here, that is about how to treat missing data at this point. Okay, I'm just going to create a new case in this regard. Well, there's no missing data here, so that does not apply to us, but this might be important if you have someone who did not evaluate one of the different cards. Well, we could more or less leave, leave it as is or click on next. Then we could either do the restructuring right now or just get the syntax. I want to do this now, so I'm just going to click on finish. And that's my result. I have the respective index variable at this point. I also have an ID which tells me this was before the first card, second card and so forth, for whatever case I need this. I have my evaluation scores, the normalized scores, the red, blue, standard, high and price variables. And if now I want to conduct an analysis, my conjoint analysis, that is, I could simply go to analyze, regression, linear, take the evaluation score as dependent and all the other variables as independent. Click on OK. He will switch to this view and he tells me how each of these variables impacts the evaluation score. So I get a result for red and blue. I see red is positive, blue is negative. I always interpret them in relation to the default category. So red as compared to black is more interesting. Blue as compared to black is less interesting. Standard and height class equipment as compared to no audio equipment is less interesting. Well, this was not real data, so this was kind of simulated data, so this might explain these strange results. However, the price, this makes sense. If the price is larger, becomes less interesting, that's why it's a negative sign here. All of these variables are highly significant. Well, I have a lot of observations, so this does not surprise. If I take a look up here, we have an R squared of 11.6%. That's not very good, but it could also be worse. So here I'm going to, or I'm explaining consumer behavior. So that's a, well, 
not so nice result, but as I said, it could be worse. So it's a medium quality result. But well, we're not yet finished at this case because it could be that those parts might be interesting, but I could have interaction effects as well. What do I mean by interaction effects? Well, it could be that a red car with a high class audio equipment might be even more interesting than just due to the fact that it's red and has a high class effect, um, equipment. So I could add an additional variable here, an interaction effect, let's call this interact, which is red times high. I get a new variable, which I then can add via regression analysis. I'm going to put interact here as well. And I see this new variable is highly significant as well. It's relatively large, it's positive. So yeah, if I have a red car with a high-tech audio equipment, this has a significant, or quite strongly significant impact, positive impact on the evaluation as such. And well, it also increases R squared quite strongly. So it's more or less two point some percentage points by which R squared is increased by just considering this interaction as well. So that's a good choice or good possibility to check whether particular combinations of levels of attributes might be even more or even less interesting for our participants. That's the added bonus from this tutorial that we actually take a look on not the classical conjoint analysis, which we have up to the first part, but that we also say, well, I could add additional control variables, additional interaction terms. Well, if I include additional interaction terms, I could include additional moderators into my analysis at this point. So I cannot do just a conjoint analysis, find something out about how much are they willing to pay for red and blue in addition. But for example, if I bundle red and high class, how much would this bundle be worth to my customers on top of what the color would already get me as an additional bonus. And that's an additional interesting insight which might be quite valuable to marketers as such. Well, with this comment, I can then conclude the session. I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.